guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my 10 tips for maximum productivity. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it because I don't know what else to say for an intro. So step number one is finding your most productive time. So for example, I am a morning person. If I wake up and it's seven o'clock, I feel like I've overslept. Like I am just naturally wired to be a morning person. I am my most productive in the morning. I'm awake early. I'm in bed early, literally like by 9.30 or 10. 9.30 if I'm like feeling really crazy and wanting to stay up late. I'm just a morning person. So for you, if you're a night owl, it wouldn't be really helpful for me to sit here and tell you, oh yeah, wake up at 7 a.m. and you'll be productive if you're not waking up until like eight or nine and then you're staying up really late. So if you're a night owl, your most productive time is probably gonna be in the afternoon or evening. If you're a morning person, obviously you're going to be most productive in the morning. So number step number one is definitely to figure out your most productive time. Step number two would be to clean your space. And again, different people are wired differently. For me, I am a clean freak. I'm very clean, very neat, very organized. I get, not that like I don't have my days where I'm messier, but I'm just very clean. I cannot work in a cluttered space. And I know that's probably kind of like odd to say because my, my like background is somewhat cluttered, but it's like a very organized cluttered, if you know what I mean. So I would definitely say to clean your space. So if you're trying to get homework done, if you're working from home, you're trying to get work, like home work done, clean your space. It's just so hard to work in a cluttered mess. It's very easy to get distracted because if you're doing something and you look over and you see something else that shouldn't go there or needs to be put away, it's just very easy to get sidetracked and then divert your attention to doing something that you like don't need to do or shouldn't be doing or whatever. Step number three, and this is my, I wouldn't say my biggest tip, but one that I use the most besides keeping my space clean is creating a to-do list slash setting goals. So setting goals slash creating a to-do list really helps to narrow down and just visualize what you need to do. Again, speaking from personal experience, it can get a little overwhelming if I'm just thinking in my head, okay, I have to do my homework, I have to do school, I have to clean my room, I have to do this. Whereas if you can write things down and visualize it, it almost takes a sense of pressure off you because you don't have to remember everything, you can just look at it and visualize. And it's oddly satisfying checking things off. I like to use my iPad to take notes on or to make to-do lists on. There's tons of different like ways you can do it. I like using Notability and GoodNotes because they come with different formatting and you can literally just write down your to-do list. You can check it off. You can have different colors and stickers and it just makes it kind of fun. So it's almost, like I said, just somewhat satisfying to be able to say, okay, this is what I need to get done today. I'm gonna write it down and then you can check things off and see how much progress you've made throughout the day. Step number four, and this somewhat ties into finding your most productive time is to do your external things first. So like if you have to run errands, if you have to, I don't know, take something to the post office, if you have to go to the car wash, things like that that require you to leave the house. Again, this is mainly because I'm a morning person, so for me, I would wanna do those things first. If you're more energized and energetic in the later part of the day, it's kind of probably gonna be the opposite, but I would say to just do your external things first. That way you can get those out of the way. They're usually like the bigger things. You could just get them done, and then when you come home, you can focus on accomplishing the smaller, easier tasks to do. Tip number five would be to start with five or 10 minutes. So this is for something that maybe you don't wanna do or something that's a little bit of a bigger thing, writing an essay, doing a chunk of homework, cleaning a big part of your house, um, cleaning your room. And if you can just start with five minutes, oftentimes you'll wanna just keep going, but if not, at least you've just scraped off a chunk of time. So if you have to write an essay, you have to write a 3,000 page or 3,000 word essay, just start with write for five minutes. Just set a timer, write nonstop for five minutes, and then take a break. Go get some coffee, maybe get a snack, go do something else, then come back, do it again. And then it just kind of like breaks things up and makes it not quite so daunting. Tip number six is to put your phone in another room. And I am so guilty of this. I will literally sit down at my desk, whether upstairs or downstairs. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get stuff done. My phone will be right next to me. And I legit don't even realize I pick up my phone and start scrolling. I legit don't even realize that I picked up my phone. Like I would literally sat down, like, okay, I'm not gonna look at my phone. I'm gonna get this done. I'll put my phone down, do something for like 30 seconds, pick my phone up. And like, I don't even consciously think to do it. And I've done this before where I've accidentally left my phone in another room and then I've gone to like pick it up subconsciously. And I'm like, oh, my phone isn't here. Where's my phone? And then it's like, oh, well now I have to go get up and get it. Whereas if you purposefully leave it in another room, you actually have to get up and get it if you want it. And then that kind of like clues you and like, wait, no, I'm not supposed to be on my phone. I'm supposed to be doing blah, blah, blah. So I would say definitely if you were trying to get something done, if you're on a time crunch to put your phone in another room. I do have certain like 
situations where I will use my phone to kind of help me stay productive. Like I'll put something on, I'll watch it on YouTube. I will even use my iPad to do that. And that kind of just helps time pass more quickly, kind of distracts me while I'm being productive and busy. But if you actually have to sit down and focus on something, I would really encourage you to leave your phone in another room because it's so, so distracting. And it's like not even a conscious thing. Like I'm not even consciously being distracted by it. It's literally just reflex. And that is so bad, I know, but I know I'm not the only one who struggles with that. Tip number seven is get enough sleep and drink enough water. And depending on what stage of life you are in, I know that is going to be difficult. If you are in college, you might not be able to have the best sleep schedule. I know high school is a little bit different because like you have classes, you know, from a certain time to a certain time. College is a little bit different because you can actually like pick your classes and pick your times. If you're out of college, if you're working, you know, I'm different jobs are different. It just depends on what stage of life you're in, but I would really encourage you to, if you can, at least be drinking enough water. If you can't get enough sleep, that's that's a little bit of a harder thing to tell people, make sure you're getting enough sleep because if you, again, if you're in school, if you're working and you have a deadline, it's like, okay, well, I don't have time to sleep. I have to get this done. You always have time to drink water. You can have a little cup of water or a bottle of water and just having water. Water's obviously very good for you. And if you can't get sleep, try and drink water. Tip number eight, and this is something that I also do, is to time block your day. So if you have a busy day, if you have stuff that needs to get done today, if you have homework that's due, write it out in time increments so for me i'd say seven o'clock wake up do devotions eight o'clock work out nine o'clock i don't really work out for a half hour so maybe or for an hour so maybe like 8 30 eat breakfast nine o'clock start whatever it is that you're doing and then put in in your time increments breaks if you are someone who gets like bored easily like me i can't really do the same thing for very long i'm just i just get bored very easily so like, okay i'm gonna do homework from nine to ten then at 10 o'clock, maybe I'll go for a walk, maybe I'll go grab Starbucks or Boba, just something to kind of break up your day. But if you write it down in terms of time, you can kind of help to keep yourself accountable. And again, it's just having things visually to look at and see is super helpful. Tip number nine is to take breaks in between tasks. So this is almost like, I would view this almost as like a reward system. So like, okay, I'm gonna do school work for an hour. And then at the end of that hour, if I've been diligent to do school. Wait, what's my tip? Take breaks. You take breaks. Obviously, if you get tired, if your brain is fried, you can't think you're not gonna be productive if you're just going, going, going. So just take breaks in between things. Like I said, go get a coffee, go, go for a walk, do something else, which this kind of leads into tip number 10, which is multitasking. Multitasking is not controversial, but maybe like, debatable like some people are really good at it some people don't like it so again if you have a lot to do breaking things up giving yourself breaks and multitasking you'll get so much more done and it won't even really seem like it so if you're doing school for an hour take a break maybe go sweep the kitchen get that out of the way or if you're working from home do your work for an hour take a break maybe go do like a quick little 10 minute workout and then go back and do just something that breaks things up keeps you busy or you active and moving without feeling so like tr not trapped but just like bored i guess in your current state so those are my 10 tips for staying organized and staying productive so that is it for this video hope that this was helpful in some small way and i will see you guys all in my next video bye